Welcome to our morning devotions again. It's lovely to have you join with us as we continue our studies in the book of Galatians. We're in Galatians chapter 3 and verses 1 to 6 that we're looking at today as Paul continues this discussion of what true salvation is and what is the law, where does the law come into this. So Galatians 3 and verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Just as Abraham believed God and was counted to him as righteousness. Now as we just work our way through that, we see in verse 1, first of all, there are, Paul speaks of how these Galatians have been bewitched. Someone has come in on them and, and led them astray. And we need to be so aware that in the Christian life, there will be those who will seek to lead us astray. And we need to be watchful. And always, when people teach us something, particularly if it seems new to us, check that it's biblical and faithful to the gospel. He then he mentions about Jesus being crucified before them. And I think what he's getting at is, if you change the gospel, if you take away from the gospel which is through Christ alone and received through faith alone to a gospel and salvation that includes works. He says, basically, you're dishonouring Jesus' death. You're saying that Jesus' death was not enough. And you know, how people respond to the gospel and what people do with the gospel is a very personal thing about our attitude to Jesus. And indeed, if we are those who, who don't respond to the gospel in the right way, we're not just forgetting, like, rejecting a theory. It's a personal slight on Jesus Christ. So he challenges them and his argument here is very clever. He says in verse 2, Did you receive the spur by works of the law or by hearing of faith? He's getting back to that first basics we talked about last time. Did your salvation come to you? Did the Holy Spirit enter you? By you keeping the law? Or did it, all this happen as you came to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the obvious answer they have to say, listen, we've come to experience salvation, we've come to receive the Spirit through faith in the Lord Jesus. It's not by the works of the law, it's through faith. And then he says, listen, having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? And what he's teasing out here is that the Christian life is to be a life of faith day by day. It's not just faith once, when we're saved but faith is leading us the whole way through trusting in Christ trusting in his grace day by day one of the things I struggled as a young Christian was this understanding of living by faith the righteous will live by faith and you become holy as you live by faith and I couldn't figure it out but it means every day totally relying on Jesus for everything looking to him for strength for guidance for direction looking to him for forgiveness and mercy day by day now he goes on here and says verse 4 did you suffer so many things at vain if indeed it wasn't vain he basically says listen the gospel that you've suffered for it was pointless it was in vain if you're turning away from that gospel those who came to Christ, they suffered so much from the, the Jews and the Gentiles alike. He says, what's the point of that if you're now turning away from that gospel of grace which those people indeed eh, despise? He goes on and just reiterates in verse 5 that it's by faith again. All that's happened in their lives is through faith. Yes, as Christians we have commandments that we have to keep. We have the Ten Commandments. But it's not a life lived in our effort. Oh, and that's good to know. That's encouraging to know. Otherwise, if it's down to my effort, we will struggle and fall and have no hope. It's a life lived in faith in Jesus. And we keep the Ten Commandments. We keep what God calls us to through trusting in Jesus, trusting in his goodness, trusting in his power to do that. And when we do that, he says, finally, in verse 6, we're a very good company. We're with Abraham who believed God and was counted to him as righteousness. 
Oh, it's coming back to this. Nearly every religion in the world has a salvation of do your best, have a wee bit of faith and religion put in and hopefully you'll be all right. Where Christianity is, there's nothing you can do to make you right with God. There's nothing you can do so that you're, indeed, you're being God's good books. You have to rest totally on Jesus, on his perfect life, on his sacrificial death on the cross. Rest on Jesus alone. A salvation that's based on faith. A life then that's lived on faith. Lived trusting in Jesus. Lived in a relationship with Jesus. A relationship which develops through the word and prayer day by day and he's going to seek to live a life of obedience it's a life of faith the righteous will live by faith amen